Hey everyone, welcome to another HEB virtual cooking class. I'm excited you are here with us tonight. We're gonna, we've got a great show, a really big show, great show, really big show. Uh, my friend as always, my fact checker, my, uh, the great person who's gonna answer all your questions as they come in live, Sean and Samuel, my homie, my friend, the wind beneath my wings, thanks for being here. Uh, you know, without you, there is no real way to check all the facts and things that come out of my mouth uh, from my brain space. So, you know, I thank you for being here. I'm, I'm not crying. Here. You're crying. Uh, <laughs> glad to be here. If you guys have any questions about what Scott Tompkins is yes. doing, um, hit me up in the chat. I will ask these questions in real time and answer them the, to the best of my ability or interrupt Scott in the middle of what he's doing. Tell us what we're doing today. Sides. That's right. Yes. I'm we have all the holiday sides. First of all, uh, you made it through the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Yep. Now comes the real test of all your cooking expertise, right? Yes. Now it comes down to like, what are we doing? What's yes. going on? So many holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, there's so many great things. The New Year's parties to celebrate. Yep. How do you organize it all? We're here to help. Today's all about holiday sides. So whatever holiday you're gonna celebrate or however you're gonna celebrate, however big a celebration you're gonna have, we wanna show you some great recipes for some tricks and some tips. And I'm gonna show you a fantastic biscuit recipe that's gonna be on every single table or should be because everybody needs to have a good piece of carb at the holiday table. So we have, a, we have a great show, we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, as always, if you're watching on Facebook, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, every item I pick up, like maybe this one, maybe they can find it, maybe they can't, uh, you can click on that item and you can grab it uh, through the power of the interwebs. Uh, you can click on that item and buy it, you can cook along with us. If you missed something, don't forget, we're doing this for 12 months, you can always go back to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B, check out all the stuff you missed, great celebrity chef content, great content from all over H-E-B. Uh, and those of you watching on YouTube, hello, welcome. And those of you that signed up for the class, welcome. We are ready to go. All right, we're going to get started. We have Thank you. A, okay, let's cook. We have a full agenda. I had a lot to get out of my <laughs> mouth. That was a lot. I appreciate you guys for hanging in there. Uh, we have our creme fresh biscuits. We're going to start with this. So this is a lot to kind of do. So we're going we're gonna to alter some of the recipes just a little bit. We're going to start with our creme fresh biscuits. But as you'll see, and I'll kind of talk you through it as we go, that we'll kind of, uh, we're going to modify as we go. But I've got a great, great thing I'm going to show you first. It's all about the biscuits. We're going to start the biscuits now. We're going to finish the biscuits before the end of the show. We're going to get started. So creme fraiche biscuits. It starts with, I'm walking all the way over to my freezer because everything's got to be cold with biscuits. So what I'm really, really excited to show you guys um, is that last year around this time we did a buttermilk biscuit. It was really fun. We, you can always go back and rewatch that. But there's a lot of great information when it comes to making biscuits. So this year we kind of upped the ante and made it even better. We, so we substitute a little bit of butter for creme fraiche to kind of make it more of a robust, flavorful, fatty kind of, uh, uh, I just need like a beat. Should have been a beat. <laughs> I wish I had a, a, a wrap to go with Do that. Do it. Yeah. Uh, all right, so it starts, everything, when you make a biscuit, so I have notoriously hot hands. I know this about myself. So when you're working with biscuits, if you start handling the butter too much, you, know, you start doing everything, you're going to start to melt the butter, you start melting your ingredients. And the biggest key to those beautiful, fluffy biscuits is you want to make sure that everything's cold. So the butter, the creme fraiche, everything we're using, from the buttermilk, everything. So I have actually put all my dry ingredients, which is my baking powder, baking soda, salt, sugar, and flour. And I'm using cake flour. And guys, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Uh, both the HEB ones are fine. Uh, the organic cake flour, fantastic. The regular uh, HEB cake flour, also good. Um, the reason why we're going to use a cake flour as opposed to an all-purpose or a bread is we want the less protein content. We don't want so many gluten-forming compounds that our biscuit's gonna be tough and heavy. However, because I know somebody's gonna ask, can you use all-purpose? Yes, you absolutely can. You wanna handle it a little bit less because it takes less when you start getting into the, you know, the all-purpose and the bread flour to get those gluten-forming strands going. However, we, are, we have, do have kind of a fail-safe, so if you only have all-purpose, don't worry about it, you can do it. You may end up having, having to add a little more buttermilk or moisture to your actual dough just to kind of help make sure everything's not all dry because um, it will soak up a little bit more than the cake flour. Um, but the thing I love about this is we're going to add a little more fat, but the fat is actually going to help us from developing so much gluten in our, in our actual finished dough. So yeah, so the fat from the butter, the buttermilk, and the creme fine. fraiche actually inhibit gluten formation. Word. Inhibit. Okay. It inhibits. So, That's why you're here, Sam. Yes. In addition to that, you're also using the cake flour, mm. right? And the cake yes. flour has a lower protein content, and those proteins are the gluten, right? And they that's, are. Right? That's and that's the, why when you have cake, it's crumbly, and ha it's very light. and e like. We want yeah. less gluten-forming compounds. Yes. Exactly. All right, put on a pair of gloves. So there we're we going to grate our butter. 
Now, if you like to, I don't like those. Uh, this is I'm not calling anybody out. I think they're great if you have one of those little pastry cutters that cuts the butter. I always find I cut more of my skin than I actually do of the actual butter because they're a little sharper and I tend to move a little bit faster. So if you have a pastry or butter cutter, you can absolutely use that. I find the best tool for biscuits like these is to grate it on a uh, just a cheese grater. I don't know if they sell these at different HEBs. Um, box grater, biggest holes, two sticks of butter. So normally, if I were making this without the creme fraiche, we'd use a pound of butter for the biscuits. Now, in the recipe, you'll see it says four ounces. So why am I using two sticks? Because I'm doubling the recipe. Because this recipe, if I want to have five biscuits, I don't want to feel bad that I've taken away from somebody else's enjoyment of their biscuits. <laughs> so I'm going to make a double batch. Got it. I encourage you to make a double batch. You can always start with a single batch if it's just you or you're alone. You want to give away to your friends. But I like the double batch because this is what's going to happen. This is what happened in the rehearsal. We make the biscuits. They all smell good. We brush them with butter. So we take them out of the oven. It's like, oh, let me try one. Let me try one. So like there, you've lost four or five, and they just the smelling and the grabbing. We haven't even plated them and gotten them out to the table yet. So do yourself a favor, double the recipe. So I'm going to grate the butter. So this is and your butter, butter is frozen, right? It is frozen because again, if you don't have, if you're one of those people that has like really, you're always freezing. You're always got really cold hands. You probably won't need to freeze it as long as I do. But my hands, man, they run hot. If I keep butter in my hand for longer than a minute, it starts to just like it'll start to juice out on me. Like it'll start to melt. Because butter does melt at room temperature, at body temperature, not room temperature. I bought temperature. a box grater specifically for this. I'm telling you, anytime pie dough. I mean, you'll use it for not just the not just biscuits, but it's for pie dough. It's for a lot of different uses. You want to get it as small as you can. Now, some people like bigger chunks of butter, and there's a great French word, and I forget what it is, which which means which I probably should even brought it up if I can't remember the word. But I bring it up anyway, where they take the when they make a like pastry or like a crust or something like that, or like a tart dough. They kind of smash and pull the strands of butter so it kind of elongates it and makes those better pockets of uh, But there's a word for it, and Charlotte's going to Google it right now. Uh, so we're taking two sticks of butter. We're going to grate them. So you can see they're just kind of, sh you know, they're shaving off. This is really, really good. Now, if you have really sticky hands or you have really wet hands or stuff slides, just throw your butter in the flour and roll it around. And that way you can get a better grip on it. That's another little tip if you can't get a hold of your butter and it feels like it's sliding on you. And the last little bit, I think it's totally fine to, uh, if you have a little bit bigger of a chunk, don't worry about it. Just chuck it in there. Because again, we want reason why we want everything nice and cold is because the water in the butter is going to create steam. Now, we have a leavener in our, in our dough. Obviously, we've got baking soda. We've got baking powder. Those are going to help leaven. But we want the water in the butter, we want the butter to be fully, you know, kind of frozen and, and cold so that way when it hits the oven, the butter granules, those little things are all still intact. And that way you won't have the complete like leach out. Or if you've ever made biscuits, and sometimes it happens, and I'm not dissing at all on the uh, canned biscuits, but sometimes those get a little hot, and they start to kind of, you know, you get that little oil buildup underneath. You don't want that. You want, you want the butter and everything really, really cold. I'm going to use my little bench scraper. I don't okay, chef, any butter. Um, I have Googled, and I have come up with. You find it? What is the Hit me. presage technique? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm saying that totally wrong, so if you speak French out there, I apologize. If I butchered the language. It sounded perfect from it where did? I'm standing. Did you like Pinsage. how it answered, answered yes. like a Yes, great, question? great word. It just sounds fancy, too. Yes. You could probably also use that when people wouldn't know what you're saying unless you actually did speak French fluently. Like, I would probably be the guy that would use it wrong, thinking that it sounded really smart, and it would be like, whoops, you're going you're gonna, to, you're folding butter into the dough? I was like, well, I was just trying to sound fancy, and this is why we don't do that. All right, my so creme fraiche. Can you do all of this ahead of time? Could I grate my butter ahead of time? Yep. Could I make my Keep dough Keep it all frozen, time? absolutely. Great. I'm taking you through the whole process here. So our creme fraiche, so creme fraiche, now, Charlotte, you said earlier, say we went through this, you use sour cream. Can you yes. use sour cream? Yes, you absolutely okay. can. I like creme fraiche, and you can definitely use the sour cream, but I feel like the creme fraiche, the difference between, to me between creme fraiche and sour cream is that creme fraiche has less of the sour flavor and more of the like creamy kind of flavor. So it's got a little bit of that. It's still a cultured cream, but it's not as sour as like a sour cream would be. So you get a little lighter note of some of the sour with the buttermilk. It's happening again. I made every shot until just now. It's like it's like a weird thing when the when the actual show goes live. I can't hit anything with trash can. It's two feet away from me. Um, but I like the I like the fact that creme fraiche is just a little more creamy. Uh, all right, so we're gonna add the butter and the creme fraiche. So you see this? This is all we're doing. I'm putting gloves on. I feel like this is the only layer I have to really protect the, uh, the butter from my warm hands. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to work quick. All you're going to do is you're just going to move it around, incorporate the uh, creme fraiche into the flour. What you want is little kind of bubbles, like little, little beads, little BBs of this butter and creme fraiche that have kind of latched onto the flour. 
which is why I'm wearing an apron also. Uh, why I wore a black apron, I don't know. I should have worn a white apron or a gray apron maybe, but I just feel like I wanted you to see that we're actually doing the work here. We like actually do. Uh, so all this is going to get mixed in. Do you see this? So it's still really, really cold. Again, because I know that my hands are definitely warmer, I want to make sure that I don't melt the butter completely and keep all those nice pockets. You see, I didn't, didn't really go crazy. It's just kind of, see, it's kind of in bits. See those little flecks in there? That's all you need to do. As long as it's fully incorporated, no huge pieces, that's it. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to create a well here. In goes the buttermilk, and that's it. That's how fast it comes together. And you got flour all over yourself. This is where it's handy to have a small vacuum always near you. Did you say a like small like vacuum? A small vacuum for when you make a huge mess. I don't have a vacuum here, but I do have uh, lots of towels and some sanitizer. So I'll scrape it all into my trash can. All right, more gloves as we go here. The buttermilk's going to go in, then we're going to fold all this together. Now, because we are working with cake flour, I want you to know, don't be nervous when I'm going to show you, this is why I want to show you this whole thing start to finish, is that when you pour it all in, you kind of get it going here, it may not all form together. Like, it's going to feel really, really loose because we don't have a lot of gluten setting up, right? So I'm going to pull all this together here. It should be just, a, just slightly wet, which is totally fine because we're going to use a lot of flour to kind of keep it from sticking as we go. You definitely want to make sure, especially with biscuits, ooh, it's really cold. It feels good, though. Really cold. You want to make sure that when you're rolling out biscuits, if you don't have enough flour on your biscuit, and you may have done this, whether it's whether you're making them from scratch or just using some that you got from the store, if you don't flour enough on the surface and it gets sticky, and you go to like cut them and you go to pull it up, it's like wah, wah, wah. It like sticks there, and you're trying to drag it, and it's like a whole mess, and then you're frustrated, and that whole thing. So make sure you flour your workspace, flour the dough really well, because you don't want anything to be sticking. You want them to come right out, pop out of the mold. All right, so you can see here, all right, I'm going to kind of move all this. So there's a little bit on there. I'm just trying to make sure it all kind of comes together. I'm not really trying to like fully get it, you know, work it or fold it. All right, so we're getting pretty close. See that? See how it's kind of all, still have some dry bits, and that's all right. They're just kind of sticking. Most of it's sticking to me. I'm telling you, I got hot hands. It just kind of glues to me. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> what it's, it's warm hand, cold heart. Warm hand, cold heart. Is that is how it, it cold? Is, it, is that how? Is that how it works? Is that how? Is that how? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not familiar with that, as I feel like I have a very warm heart. So I don't go. know okay. if that's how it okay. works. If it's cold, is that how? Are you? Did you want to, Charlotte? Do you want to confess? It's getting for the holidays. <laughs> is there anything you want to say about? So biscuits All right, are. See my bowl? Biscuit dough is considered a short dough. Right? Short dough, correct. So it's a high fat to flour ratio. Correct. But it's also a quick bread, meaning it has a high proportion of, of chemical leaveners. In yes, it as well. Which it does. Okay. Which we have. So in one, in a one batch. Because remember, I'm using a double batch. One batch we have five teaspoons baking powder, two, two, two teaspoons baking soda, which actually helps browning of all that. So we've got a lot of leavener, but we also have the butter, which is why we want to keep the butter cold, is because we want to make sure that, uh, so we're going to put a little flour on top again, as you're going to see, and it's, it's okay to use more flour. You just want to make sure nothing sticks. So I've got a little dough here. This is what I want to, I want to show you. So I'm going to move this over. See, it's kind of sticking. Got your little bench scraper. Give it a flip. Same thing on this side. So a little flick of flour. Hey, Flicking Scott. Flour. Yeah, there you go. Right. So we're, we're having a couple of uh, people say they're having a hard time hearing you. So could you just speak up a little bit? Flick of flour? Yes, I can. Thank you. Can you. Speak up a little, a little bit more. So a flick of flour. You're going to flick the flour with your wrist over a, so you try, how do you get it evenly? It's like skipping a stone. So imagine you skip a stone on a, uh, you know, like on a pond, if you will. So we want to make sure, see, we're not sticking. All right, now watch this. We're going to fold this. It's called the book fold. Those of you that okay. uh, watched the class last year, we do the, what's called a book fold. The reason why we do a book fold, we want to create layers in our biscuit. So layers will puff up. Layers will also separate really pretty. So I'm going to do six folds in this. And I'm going to turn every time. So I'm going to show you. This is considered a fold. One fold. See how this kind of broke apart? You see there's not a lot of gluten yeah. kind of like stretching. And that's OK. It's going to do that. Mine will do that. I'm going to show you. That's why I want to show you. So you're going to see this and be like, oh, it's coming apart. That's OK. So that's two oh, folds. OK, there we go. And a little bit of flour on top just to make sure. If anything falls off, just stick it back on. We're going to flip this guy over. Again, we want to make sure nothing sticks to our board here. A little more flour right on top. All right, now we're going to use our rolling pin. So I folded it the one time. I kind of did it by hand. You don't need to go crazy. We're not looking for like, you know, you don't have to roll it out like a half an inch thick and then keep folding it. I'm just going to give a little fold here, a little fold back. You see how it's starting to rip? Totally fine. We're going to give a little flour. So that's how many folds? Four folds, right? Four folds. Flip it over again. 
All right. A little more flour on top. Now we're going to roll it out again. I love how you're patting this dough. It is so satisfying. It feels good. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. ASMR. Or girl. You know, that's right. <laughs> All right. We're going to roll it out again. The final fold here. We're going to fold it in on itself here. Last time. In and in. So do you see how it's starting to break less? Because we're developing a little bit of gluten, right? So it's starting to kind of go, all right, I get what you're doing. Do you want it's me to like kind of hold together? It's a rustic croissant thing going on here. Seriously. So we're, yeah, it's kind of like making puff pastry dough, right? So we're going to, so now we got our brick here. Here's what we're going to do. It just feels good. <laughs> you're good. You're a good boy. All right, so we're going to roll this out. <laughs> and we're going to do it to about an inch thick is what we're looking for. About an inch is what I like to do. And then we're going to talk about reworking the dough. So you don't want to, do, like, once you get it to the point where you're going to re-roll it, you don't want to re-roll it too many times because you're going to create that toughness and you're going to create that biscuit where it's like, hey, it was really, really nice, but now it's going to be like, eh, it starts to get a little more tough. And you can always tell, right? Try to you make biscuits. And like, yes. Once you start to get to the first kind of, like, your scraps, you put them all back together, you cut them out again, you put it again, and it's like those last ones start to get, like, yep. somebody goes in and goes, like it's the same thing with cookies. Every time you yes. rework the dough, they get the cookie will get smaller and smaller. I have a little uh, pastry cutter. It's a little round. You can use a gla I've used glasses. I've used ring molds. You can use anything you want to use. Shape of Texas, square molds, whatever you want to use. I flour it a little bit and then straight down. Don't twist. Whoever told you to twist, don't twist. Because we don't want to seal off the biscuit. We want to make sure we just go straight down and straight back up. I got a sheet pan, parchment I forgot to grab over here. That's they're going right. to go straight in there. The twisting motion can cause the dough to, to seal or press the sides That's together. That's right. You want to really and make sure. prevent it from um, lifting. So see all the, we want all that stuff in there. You can see the layers from yep. all the folding. In all the layers. Biscuit. So it's about an inch thick. Move over Grand's biscuit. I'm telling you. So why are we putting them so close together? You may be asking, like, Scott, what are you doing? You're putting them too close together. So biscuits need community. And what does community do? Community helps raise each other up. They help support each other. So just like uh, in a regular community, our community of biscuits are going to be better off when they're together. If we put them all apart, we start to bake them, they may kind of go, oh, they may go out, they may go over, they may go up. But here, they're all touching each other, so they're all nestled in there tight. They're going to lean on each they're gonna other. They're going to lean on each other, and they'll all kind of grow up at the same, like, same pace, basically. That oh, works? It's like yeah, it works, right? Like pre-K, kinder, That's right. the first lean. grade, all grow up. Together. This is where, sing it, Charlotte, lean on me, let's go. And I just do it in a high C. Um, is that a, I get is that a song tune, thing? Please, thanks. <laughs> is that a song? Can I get the piano and a soft, uh, I don't even know what, K, K, is it a K? <laughs> is there a K chord in there? I'll be <laughs> your uh, all right, so we're just nestling these guys together. I'm going to show you the rework here. I'm telling you, this is really, really easy to do. Now, in order to make your biscuits as ethereal, and Charlotte, I said this earlier, and Charlotte's like, do you even know what ethereal means? And I'm like, I think it means something to do with, like, heaven. And I was like, I was kind of close, but I was also pretty far off. Uh, ethereal, what's it mean? It means... Are you ready? So, are, here, bring me the Extremely definition. Extremely delicate and light in a way that seems too perfect for this, for this world. world. <laughs> oh, see, there's my... So, I was, like, semi-close. I get like 10% uh, credit on that one. Okay, we're changing right, the name of the biscuits to Scott's <laughs> ethereal. ethereal Biscuits. All right, we're going to rework the dough here. I don't want to go crazy, but I want to make sure as we cut into it, you guys saw those little cracks. I don't want to be uh, having, the, I don't want those to fall apart on me, so I'm going to do a little bit more flour here. That's really all I need on the back side. We're just going to make sure, just kind of form it into a little, you know, a little flat disc. And then we're going to give it a little roll, starting from the inside out. I don't need to go crazy. I've got a double, double batch here, so I'm kind of going to fill up the pan just enough. So I'm going to go right straight back down. Straight in, straight back down. Again, you can kind of see, can you see, I don't know if you can see that, Rob. You can see those little flecks of butter have not melted. Everything's cold, so it's all working the way it should. And those little flecks of butter, when they hit my hot oven, they're going to start to melt, and they're going to start to create that steam, which is going to give us that beautiful loft. Now, the other thing that I did not tell you guys, it's not in the recipe. So now this is, I could rework this, but I'm just going to compost this guy, and I'll leave that there. So the other thing I didn't tell you about, how to make really good biscuits is that I've learned is that because biscuits are a short dough, they've got a lot of fat in them, they tend to dry out a little more. There's less moisture. Uh, I like to do a water bath method for my biscuits. So in my oven that's preheated to 375, I have a pan of water up top. Um, reason why I have it up top, not down below. Typically, you'd always want to have your water bath 
below your food in case it spills or doesn't ruin the food. But this oven is so hot, I keep it up top. Um, and I trust the fact that I'm going to be able to not spill it as I'm doing it. Um, the biscuits that I'm going to put before they go in the oven is a little bit of water and you'll see egg yolk in the recipe. However, because you're here and you're at the class, I'm going to show you my extra special technique I like to use, which is take the same two egg yolks and then get rid of the water and add heavy cream. And you get this beautiful mixture here. So this is heavy cream and egg yolks only. And Charlotte, what did you say about brushing them with milk? You said that it's not, it doesn't oh, give you the browning enough effect. There's not enough fat. If you want to get that beautiful brown color, you need that heavy cream. Um, egg yolks will do the thing, but you need some of that. And this little offset, you see my little brush here? I got that at HEB. Super awesome. So it's like perfect. The heavy cream has enough, sh like there's a little bit of, well, not really. Heavy cream doesn't have too much. It's mostly butter fat. But they brown yeah. and caramelize the top of, of um, the sugars in the, in the dough. That's right. And we have flour. the egg yolks, which are going to also create that beautiful kind of golden brown. And that's brown. a pretty swanky pastry. It's like Well, pastry Charlotte, brush. I'm a pretty swanky person. So when I saw a slightly tilted pastry brush, I was like, that's just my type of, type of swank, and I'm going to pick it up and do it. Uh, you can pick up this swanky pastry brush. At your uh, local uh, HEB, if you have a GM section, uh, not everything may be at all HEBs, but uh, they get brushed with that mixture. They get into the oven. I'm going to set the timer for about 15 minutes. We'll rotate them because no matter how good your oven is or how much money you may have paid for it, every oven has some kind of a hot spot. So always try to rotate the pan halfway through cooking. Just check on it because you don't want to be, you know, in there and half the half the batch is like burning and half the batch is still raw. So just do yourself a favor. Give a little rotation in there. I'm going to brush the bottom of this guy off. All right, we that goes in the oven. A great question. 15 minutes, um, yes. Here from we go. 15. Lisa. So, gluten free biscuits. There are plenty of great gluten free flours out there that would be perfect for this. Um, we sell a lot of great gluten free yeah. flours, too. In fact, um, gluten free flour makes, probably makes really delicious biscuits. Yeah, you don't. I mean, it's. Yeah, you. I don't ever do gluten. This is gonna. This is terrible, Lisa. I'm gonna say it. I don't ever usually use gluten-free in biscuits because I feel like if I'm eating biscuits, I'm kind of going for the like, you know, I'm gonna leave that problem to Scott in the future to figure out how he's gonna figure out how to not, you know, not eat all the the other biscuits and <laughs> worry about all the the gluten and fat and all that stuff. But it's the holidays, so I'm like, you know what? But if you are gluten intolerant or you need that, yes, absolutely. There are some great flours. I know we carry a. It's not cup for cup. It's another one. Um, yeah. It's like but if you were going to do the biscuits, one. I would I would recommend using e like cup for cup flour to a yes. gluten free baking mix. And then yes, absolutely. I think Bisquick might have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sanitize my little area here. Mix. Wash my hands off. Yeah, it's really good. And that way, uh, you know, there there there's always a difference when you go gluten free for like so you can never say that the texture is exactly like the ones that are gonna come out of my oven because. The gluten does add something, obviously, to the, to the overall texture. But you can still get really good results out of using a gluten-free flour for something like this. Regular bread, like I'm sure most people have had, the people that, are, that have celiac are completely like gluten-free. It's hard to find. You, know, you look at that great Italian bread, great French bread. It's really hard to find gluten-free bread that will match that. And that's just, the, you know, unfortunately, the power of, of good gluten. But you, know, you can get close in a lot of things. And I think short dough is a great way you can cut a corner and use gluten-free if you need to. All right. We're sanitized. You ready for this? Tershi. We're moving on. So those creme fraiche biscuits, if you're doing it with me, along with me, they'll be ready to eat in about uh, 25 minutes, which will be perfect just when we're ending. We'll pull them out of the oven. And we brush them with some heavy cream and egg yolk. That was our little trick. It's on the recipe, remember? Uh, I'm going to brush them with some melted butter as they come out. Again, we just want to coat those guys because you see how beautifully close they are all together? So we're going to brush them with butter, and you're going to get that, like, it's all just going to kind of melt and ooze over everything. It's going to be fantastic. All right, we're moving on. Okay. The, uh, we have duck fat roast potatoes and a toasted cauliflower with pine nuts, the cranberries, and pecorino romano cheese, which is really, really fun. Now, because I have a lot of stuff going in the oven here, I've got, a, uh, I've got my biscuits, I've got my water bath, I'm going to roast my, my carrot turkey, my butternut squash all together here, which I'm going to get going now. That's going to take a little bit of time here, about 30 minutes. I cranked up my oven. Because I don't want to kind of have all the ovens running because it gets, number one, really hot for me in here. But uh, I also want to show you a different <laughs> technique. If you only have one oven and you're doing the holidays and you're like, I can't do all this stuff, we don't expect you to do all four. But if you want to pick and choose, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques to be like, hey, now I can do all four because I'm going to utilize one oven for this. I'll take out the biscuits. I'll let them cool. I'll use the other thing for the roast material. I'm going to show you two ways to do 
uh, the, the cauliflower and the duck fat roast potatoes, which are delicious, right on your stovetop. All right, so the butternut squash and carrot turkey. So turkey is a, um, I believe it originated in Libya. Uh, it's a yes. great dish. So uh, typically now, uh, like in is like Israeli uh, culture and foods, they would use like a pumpkin turkey. Like typically during the fall, they would take all the pumpkins and make it. It's so delicious. Sometimes it's spelled churchy. Most of the time it's spelled churchy. C-H-E-R-S-H-I. Uh, we just call ours churchy, different, different spelling. Um, it's really, really good. So it looks like it'd be like a flavorful like sweet potato puree or something like that, but it's got butternut squash, our baby roasted carrots. It's got lemon, garlic, cumin, some caraway seeds. It's fantastic. It's really savory. It's really punchy, and it really just kind of adds an extra element of flavor. Typically, it would be like a dip on like a Mediterranean kind of messy kind of platter. It would be something you would dip like your pita in or different vegetables. Um, I love this as just a side dish because I leave it a little bit chunky. It's kind of pureed enough, but it's just got really, really good flavor. And oh, yeah. Surprise your, uh, surprise your guests. I'm telling you. So uh, you could definitely go out and butcher your own butternut squash, but why would you when you have these choices at your local HB? So we have our uh, just 10 ounces of our little butternut squash. It's already diced. It's already ready to go. It's so much easier. We have the fresh cut butternut squash, a little bit bigger in the, uh, in the size. Totally up to you how you want to do it. Or we have these guys, the big uh, behemoth, if you're going to make a. This is great for soups. Um, as I'm moving around, Rob, sorry, you can't see it. Uh, butternut squash bowls. So these are great for like different soups and things. Butternut squash is really, really good when you roast it. And we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to take my butternut squash and my carrots. Now I'm using baby rainbow carrots. Why? Uh, because number one, they're so pretty. Uh, number two, because they were readily available at my local HEB. So I grabbed those. Uh, baby carrots, if you just have regular baby carrots, it's fine. But I do love, uh, Charlotte and I were talking about the flavors of the orange carrots, the, uh, the purple carrots, or the red carrots. My um, the kid white loves carrots. a purple carrot. She it's thinks good, it's man. the coolest thing in the world. There's a sweetness to it. So to this, I'm going to add about a, it's about a half a teaspoon of caraway seeds. If you don't like caraway seeds, caraway seeds, if you're kind of curious as to what they really taste like, it's like rye bread. Just imagine yep. your, uh, your classic rye bread. That's kind of the flavor of that. I love it. And I love it in this because it just takes it to a whole different like space. So a little caraway seed, uh, a little salt, pepper, and olive oil. That's all it's going to get. And then we would normally... We would toast our garlic and red pepper flakes, a little bit of cumin, and some olive oil. And we'd add those, once we kind of toasted the garlic, we'd add that back to the carrot and butternut squash once it's roasted. And we'd puree everything together. But because I like the raw garlic flavor, I'm sorry, Charlotte, um, we're going to go ahead and skip. We're going to do something a little differently. We're going to basically roast all this with a good pinch of salt and pepper. And then I'm going to roast it. And then we're going to take it straight to the uh, to the food processor, we're going to add all that stuff in fresh because it's going to be nice and hot when we're processing it. So it'll kind of like cook the. <laughs> that guy got out of the pen. All right, so we're going to toss those together. I'm telling you, the caraway seeds when it starts roasting, it's so good. All right, here we go. On the pan here. All these ingredients, extra caraway seeds, right under a sheet pan, right into a hot oven. Um, I'm cranking mine up because we got. You know, we're short on time, so I'm going to crank mine up a little bit. All right, here we go. So I've out. also seen, like, pickled tershi, where yes. it's, like, pickled, whole vegetables, pickled the vegetables. same yep. flavor profile, right? So it's got the caraway seeds, but... So when you taste this, it has a pickled element to it because of the, uh, of the caraway seeds, yeah. to me. It has that kind of, it has that little bit of that flavor. All right, the cumin, the garlic, I'm going to set aside over here. The caraway seeds, I'm done with. I'm moving this over. All right, so I told you we're going to do the, uh, the cauliflower and the duck fat roast potatoes in our, uh, on our stove, just to make it easier, to kind of show you the way you can do it. So duck fat roast potatoes, first of all, start off with our fantastic baby potatoes here. So in the recipe, I'm using baby reds. You can use really any kind of baby potato, uh, especially around the holidays. We get these great season selects, these multiple ones. Now, Charlotte, you weren't a fan of these because the red potatoes are a little bit like, it's not your A red potato is just too waxy for me. It's waxy. You know, I'm not... I like purple potatoes, but purple potatoes are definitely more of an acquired taste. They're very, very earthy, um, so, but they're really, really pretty. And when you use them on these, it's, it's a little nicer in the presentation. I'm just going to go with these fantastic little uh, butter golds, uh, baby butter golds. These are great. I'm going to throw them in some hot water. So I have not seasoned my water, but I want to make sure I'm very, very clear with when you eat these. Here, Charlotte, try this. Okay. It's one of the ones that I'm not going to throw in a red that. potato. I'm Let me have that tater. Person. Here we go. Ready? You can do it. Hop, hop, oh, oh, yes, I caught it, y'all. Okay, bad, let's see. I'm going to taste it. It's perfectly cooked. Salted water. Really, really heavily salted water, like the ocean. I know I'm not Ooh. the only chef you've heard say that. Like, salt it like the sea because we're going to cook these potatoes on an open flame on one side. So we're going to cut these in half, and I'm going to show you a little example here. 
Ooh, some ones nice. I did earlier. So we'll take our potatoes once they're almost cooked. So we're like 90% of the way you want them cooked. So there's still a little bit of give in the middle or a little bit of like that, you know, that, uh, what's the word? Sounds like something no, that's what hard does it in the sound center. Like? Hard in the center? <laughs> sounds like hard in the center. Yeah, we'll just use hard in the center. Still a little hard in the firm? center. Firm? Is it firm? <laughs> there it is. Okay. All right. There's so many words trying to get out of my brain space and crawl through the, through the trap door here that run out the, that they all get trapped together. Uh, we're not going to flip this over. So we want to cook it about 90% of the way in our salted boiling water. We're going to take them out. We're going to let them cool. Then we're going to cut them in half. And we're going to add our duck fat and our herbs to the pan. Now in the recipe, normally we're going to take our potatoes. We're going to cut them in half, toss it with the olive oil, the rosemary, all the salt and pepper, duck fat, throw them in the oven, roast them until they're crispy. Well, if I want to save time, this is also a great way to save that to save that space in the oven, but also the finished product of these is actually better. So I want to show you that because you can get these super duper crispy by just cooking them on one side because again, they're almost all the way cooked, the steam, and you get that beautiful, like if you love crispy potatoes, this is your recipe. So that's how we're going to do it. So we've got our, our water here. I don't think either of them are salted. Oh yeah, this one's a little bit salted. I salted that one already, but we're going to salt it really, really heavily. I would salt it a little bit more. Like if you think it's enough, put a little bit more in there. Perfect, thanks. You want to salt it like the sea again. We're not going to leave it in there for 90 minutes to an hour, two hours. We just want to make sure though that when it sits in there, it's going to drop a little bit of flavor. Same thing with our cauliflower. We're going to blanch it for probably four minutes. So we want to make sure we get a really good flavor to it. Then we're going to sear it in our, uh, our pan here. So this water's hot, so don't stick your finger in it like I did. But you want to make sure you want to taste it. Should taste it and just make sure it should be salty. Salty like the ocean. So here's my potatoes. I'm going to throw them in here. We're almost to the boiling point. They're going to let those go. That only needs about 20 minutes. It doesn't need a ton of time. Again, we just want to take, your, uh, take a skewer or a long toothpick. I use this guy because I got that big K&T uh, pan. Uh, just as long as you can poke through it, but doesn't go just straight through it like it's just soft like it was butter. You want to kind of give a little bit of give in the middle, a little bit of that you know, firmness in the middle. And that way you pull those out, let them cool, and I have some that are already done that I'll show you. Cauliflower, same thing. Just talk about roast potato recipes. So easy to do. It's definitely a weeknight, not just a holiday recipe. What makes this holidays is the cranberries for Thanksgiving. But we're going to go ahead and use them for the holidays Salt. as well. Cranberries are anything, I think, Salt. for cranberry. It's cranberry. the color, right? It's the color Salt. of red. Yeah. They're pretty. They're delicious. Uh, we're going to make a, uh, the cauliflower. So typically in the recipe, we're going to blanch the cauliflower four to seven minutes. We're going to get it nice and soft. And then you would take the cauliflower little olive oil, salt, and pepper, throw it under your broiler. Well, again, I'm limited on my oven space. So you'd broil it until it got nice and crispy, and then you'd cut it up and have this beautiful kind of cauliflower steak that's just been lightly cooked, so it's not completely raw. But we're going to blanch our cauliflower here for about four minutes in some hot water, hot salted water. Uh, while we're doing that, we're going to make this little uh, this pecorino cranberry pignon, or my pine nuts. Hold the phone, chef. Hold yes. the phone. You have two pots of boiling water. Two pots of boiling water. Could I blanch my cauliflower in the same water as my taters? Yes. Do your cauliflower after your potatoes, though, because the cauliflower will, could make the water smell or cruciferous. Taste a little cruciferous. Got it. <laughs> okay. Other notes that we shouldn't say got here, it. but it's got those like it may be not so appealing, so it won't necessarily <laughs> taste bad, but it could also like you don't want your potatoes being like oh they have a definite cauliflower, kind of cooked cauliflower taste, so we okay. can always just omit that. All right, we're going to put this together here. So yes, you absolutely could. I just want to show you for, for those purposes. Uh, toast the pine nuts. Take your fresh pine nuts, put them in a dry pan, and toast them. You will start to smell these. They're so, so good toasted. Um, you can see I toast them on really, really dark. So to me, it kind of has the flavor when you get a pinon or a pine nut really toasted of like a popcorn, like kind of like that popcorn flavor. It has that really nice kind of buttered popcorn kind of feel to it. And I love the color of this. So you get three things together here. So cauliflower, pretty monochromatic. The uh, pecorino cheese, monochromatic. So we're adding a little bit of that, you know, that color through these pine nuts that are toasted. And our cranberries. OK, here we go. So about equal amounts of everything. The delicious cranberries, a little bit of my pine nuts. You like a lot of pine nuts? I like pine nuts. I okay. also like dried cherries instead. So, Dried cherries is also a great thing you can do. Dried cherries are a little bit bigger, so if you want to chop them up, you can definitely yeah. do that. Um, I actually really, really like the, uh, the cranberries that are uh, like the orange ones. The orange scented cranberries are really, really good. A little pecorino romano. So I've got a little grated pecorino. Um, I was having my other cheese up here for a second. The other so cheese pecorino is a sheep's, sheep's milk, milk cheese. Yep. 
known for being very salty. It's very sharp. It's a really, really good Italian cheese, one of my favorite cheeses, uh, because it just has such a nice tangy sharpness to it. So we're just going to coat this. We're going to kind of mix, mix it all up and coat it. Okay. This is kind of going to be just tossed over the top as a garnish. So if you took a spoonful of this right now, you'd get those notes of like you get a little sweet, you get a little popcorn, you get a little bit of that sharp saltiness, and it works really, really well, I feel like, with any kind of cruciferous vegetable. If you're going to put this on Brussels sprouts, maybe you do a little bit of honey over your Brussels sprouts, a little bit of bacon for that kind of savory note, and then you could toss all this together. It'd be really, really good because you get the saltiness of the uh, pecorino, Ooh. a little bit of that sweetness from the uh, pine nut. Right, is this going to stay here? Pine nut's not sweet. This one's um, pine nut. We have a question. Could we steam our broccoli? Sorry. Cauliflower in the microwave or in another device? You can, like an air fryer? Sure. Sure, a, you can. You can definitely do that. Um, I like to do it this way because I want to make sure it's got flavor throughout. That's why it. I like to throw it in boiling water. But if you don't have a pot big enough, you don't want to do it, you can absolutely do it in the microwave. Just put a good amount of, you know, give it a good amount of seasoning. I say a liberal amount of salt and pepper. And if you want to, the best way to do uh, to season cauliflower, I think, and I'm going to show you with my tongs. Show me, it's been show about three me. three and a half minutes. Uh, how are my biscuits doing? I'm going to flip my biscuits around. You see these? Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. They're going. They're getting there. But they're all together. That community, they're all growing up together. Season your cauliflower from the inside. So take it. You can see it. Season it from the inside so all that great seasoning kind of goes inside of it. And then you can throw it in the microwave and microwave it. But you want to make sure you get it all. I lo he lost an arm. Look at that. He lost a limb. That's all right. We'll let him sit there for another second. All right, so he's almost done. He got another minute on that guy. This is done. Our potatoes are going. So let's go ahead and start the duck fat potatoes. Yes, I have some potatoes please. over here. I'm going to pull out a cutting board. Got a clean cutting board under here. And we're going to cut some of these potatoes. This is really, really simple. We're just cutting them right in half. I've already got some done. So just a real quick cut them in half. We want that surface area nice and you don't want your red potatoes? You know, I'm going to do a few red potatoes. Do them know. all the different. You know what? I'm maybe, open to. Maybe you'll change your mind. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe you will. We'll see. All right, a few potatoes here. And I'm going to show you the key to, uh, to getting this uh, ready to go here. So I'm going to do a little, a little bit of our duck fat. So duck fat is nice. Uh, there's my timer going off, my 15-minute timer. Actually, I'm going to need a little bit more. It's about a third of a cup of uh, duck fat, or as needed, as you would need. Um, we're going to set this over like medium low, medium to medium low heat for now to start getting it going. Timer is done. I'm going to set another timer. We're going to do five more minutes on the biscuits. I'm going to see how they are. We'll check them. Again, the water bath is actually helping the biscuits to not get so caramelized so fast because ovens are dry heat, right? So ovens are dry heat. So the longer they sit in there, food tends to dry out. So you want to go, especially like a quick dough, you want to be a little faster with it than you would, uh, than you want to be. Usually it's really high heat for like scones and things or like cookies. You know, you kind of go a little higher heat so they don't dry out completely. I actually do my cookies the opposite. I do cookies at like 250 degrees for a longer amount of time because I love the raw cookie look but I want them to be fully cooked inside, if that makes sense. All really? right, I got my, go ahead, Charlotte, what are you saying? I, that's fascinating. I like a crispy, crispy cookie? crunchy, caramelized. That's not, I mean, there's something wrong with that either. There's something to be said about the caramelized sugars. All right, my, uh, my herbs that we're going to go on top of our uh, fantastic, in with our potatoes, are going to go into my pan. That's how we're going to do that. Now, this would be an excellent time to add some smashed garlic. You could throw that in there as well to really perfume it. But I feel like we got enough garlic going on with the turkey that I'm not going to go crazy and add all that. I'm going to add a little more duck fat because I promise you it's not going to hurt the overall. You can see like it's basically almost liquid at room temperature here. Duck fat is so good. If you've never used duck fat before, don't be nervous. Um, I like, I kind of compare it, Charlie, you'll, you'll totally get this, compare it to like schmaltz. Yes. Right, like rendered chicken fat. Okay. Like it just has that flavor to it. And if you were just to use regular old olive oil, potatoes would still be totally fine. But there's something about that other layer of flavor with the duck fat. It just, it just adds more richness. All right, so hot oil, being very careful. We're going to add our potatoes here. You'd probably use tongs, but I want to make it a show, so I'm going to go ahead and start playing with hot oil. So I'm going to add the potatoes, cut side down here. And you'll just see, I'm going to move. The herbs will just slide over as we need them. But the herbs are going to basically give up their... All their fantastic oils in the actual frying process. Let's flip that guy over. It's hot, hot oil. Be careful. Here we go. <laughs> Chew, so part me. kick. Ooh, bless you. Thank Whoa. you. Allergies. Is it the weather that's going from like 40 degrees to 90 degrees? Yeah. Is, it, is that throwing you off? Yeah. 
can't figure out if it's winter. I don't know. It's Texas. I'm summer. always allergic to something. <laughs> All right, potatoes go in, so you can see everything is in one layer here. You don't want to kind of get them, so like when they start to kind of crawl, crawl up the edges, just stop. Just do it in batches if you have to. All right, here we go. This goes here, the little one. And we're going to let this go. Now I'm going to turn up the heat. I get, I get one more. I get one more red one in there. Nope, I can get one more. One more, one more, one more. All right, the herbs are in there. Everything's nestled. I'm going to turn the heat up just a touch. We get these nice and caramelized. Potatoes will go away for now. All right, check out my biscuits. You ready? Yes. Look how tall those guys are taking. So let me just do, so they're not done yet, but let's just do a little, let me do a little grab, grabby, a, a teaser here. So, I'm dropping them. So can you see the, you see how they're all kind of growing together? You see how some of them are getting really, really tall as the heat is different than the sides of the oven? That's why I always want to rotate. I'm going to rotate this one more time in there. But they're getting there, and then when they come out, we're getting, they're getting slathered with this beautiful melted butter all over the place. All right, cauliflower is done. Way done. I'm going to turn that off. Get my tongs here. Cauliflower comes out. Now I'm going to cut my cauliflower into quarters. Okay. So, and Rob, you can't see this. I'm going to come over here. You forgot a little nug. I've got it draining. The nub, I know, it's There's in there. There's a little nug in there. I don't teach it to separate from the pack. All right. The, uh, the nub is going to be in there. I'm actually going to, because it looks really, really pretty and I think these are cooked well enough, I'm going to show you two different ways. So, I've got one that I quartered earlier that I kind of cut into quarters. You imagine it's all there. This is what we're going to caramelize. So this beautiful side right here, these beautiful flat cut sides, we're going to get these super duper golden brown. And we're going to start that by heating up a pan here. It's another kitchen table pan. Oh, here we go. There's our, there's our heat. Super hot. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. Just enough to kind of get it moving. But it doesn't need a whole lot. So we're going to get that hot. I'm going to put those in there. I'm going to sear those guys. Let's see how close these potatoes are here. They're getting pretty close. I think Those I smell the tershi. Tershi? Yeah. Cool name, right? All right. So yes, do you, you can think smell you the, could the roasted? Could we throw some like Mediterranean type herbs in that cauliflower, like mint and yes. some part okay. Thousand percent. I'm I'm in all the way on that. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, I love dill in this. Dill. If you want to okay. kind of complete the trifecta of really being like a pickle, you got the carrot way, you throw a little dill in there, really, really nice. Um, yeah, this is kind of more like it's kind of more basic, but yes, the more herbs you can put in there, the better. Um, I love the color of this, especially using the rainbow carrots versus the regular carrots. It's just a really nice kind of color to it. All right, my timer's down the biscuits. How are they doing? Let me see. Let me put a three-minute timer on them. I don't know, Charlotte. They're pretty good. I don't know. Why don't you close the oven? And I let think them there's finish. enough. Uh, I'm going to do one. We'll do one more minute. One okay. more minute. Here we go. One minute timer. I got you a timer. You okay. got a timer? You got it set yeah. up? Yeah, I got you. All right, we're going to get this hot. All right, here we go. I love to do, we do this kind of cauliflower all the time when we do uh, special events, and I love the way it tastes. There's something to, you know, when you, you go to a restaurant, and the first time, if you were a kid, and you had, like, boiled Brussels sprouts, and they were just, like, mush by the time you had oh. them, you're like, this is gross, and then the yeah. first time you had that fried Brussels sprout, where they fried that, you got that beautiful caramelization from that cruciferous vegetable, like the broccoli, it's, like, cooked in a hot wok, like, that flavor is so dynamic. That's what we're going to get here. So hot skillet. Flesh side down or cut side down. I'm going to give this guy this side down. And we're going to let that sit in there. And again, this is going to sit until it is completely dark, completely blistered, and completely beautiful. Let's look at our duck fat potatoes here. I feel like my biscuits need to come out. No. I feel like they're they not ready now. yet. I'm, I'm worried about them. No, don't be. If you could smell this. All right, here we go. Here's where we're hitting all the, uh, the salt on our potatoes here. They've only been in for 14 minutes. No, they were in 15 minutes. I had them in 15 minutes before that. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you about this. They're your biscuits. <laughs> were we, were we argue, was it an, did it feel like an argument? Was I think this is our first fight. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can only be so lucky, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Charlotte and I have, if you were to affectionately known as like a little sister, that'd be like the, uh, where you feel like you can't not like mess with that person. Like that's kind of where, the, uh, where we are with that. All right, I'm going to throw these are right out of the oven. Check this out. So I just want to kind of see the, uh, see the sides of the biscuit here. I'm going to kind of just poke. Can you see that butter? Move your head. Okay, there you go. Oh, All man. Right. Oh, sorry. Not, not good enough? <laughs> two, two in the way? Two in the way? No, these are good. I've let them sit because, remember, there's all that great carryover heat, right? So the butter in my bowl here. I call that one on the end right there, that corner piece. This that one right here? Fine. That's my guy. Oh, this one over nope. here. 
Your, uh, this one right your here? Your left. Yeah, that's the guy. That's mine. All right. That's yours. So we're going to throw these over the top. So I told you, depending on how hot your oven is, and our ovens are notoriously off, uh, you can have biscuits in a very short amount of time. But these are, uh, I'm going to show you another trick because, uh, and it's not a recipe that you're going to find anywhere else. It is literally uh, from the space between where my brain usually is. And it's a great recipe. It's a vanilla bean butter to go over these creme fresh biscuits. And I promise you, uh, I am only showing this to you because I made this for my, I, when I hosted Thanksgiving, I made this for my family and I made a, a quart, a quart, that's four cups of this butter, this vanilla bean butter, and it was gone in a day and a half. It is really, really good, and it's really, really good on any kind of biscuit or pancake or short dough. All right, is that enough butter? Uh, I just want to make sure these guys, I want these guys glazed. Yes. So as we're buttering these, remember, it's going to kind of seep down into those beautiful cracks, and you're going to have butter all over these biscuits. Butter these biscuits. All right. Turn these potatoes off. That's off. I almost grabbed this with my bare hands, and it would have been great because I would have had to try to act like it wasn't hot and carry it over to the rack, but it would have been, I would have been dying inside. Oh, my god! So these gosh. are going to cool off right there. Here we go. All right, you ready for this? Let's I want to see our, them taters. Uh, these are getting so close, getting so close. All right, we're going to peek on the taters. You ready? Here we go. Potatoes. Uh, Let's see them. Oh, I wonder. I turned, the wrong, I turned the wrong thing off. It's my first day. It's okay. All right, so you can see where they're starting to get. So this is... They're getting there. You're starting to. This is not even, this is not even, we're not even in the ballpark yet. They need to be, they need to start getting, they're going to get really, really brown. And because we, uh, so this is getting there. See that? A little hot spot. I'm going to rotate my pan. You want these so crispy on the bottom. This is where you like, so we've already kind of poached them and cooked them a little bit. When you get them super duper burnt and crispy on the bottom, when you go to take a bite of it, just imagine it breaks and snaps, but the inside is like creamy potato. It's like amazing. No, it's... So the, good. So you see my see my cauliflower here? It's like a you French a little, fry, but better. It is. It's like a French fry, but better because it's fried in duck fat. Well, duck fat. Yeah. Look at that. That's what you're looking for. See this? See that beautiful caramelization there? That's what you want. So I'm going to flip that guy over. I'm going to check on this guy. So you see how it's getting really, really caramelized? That's kind of what we want. I'm going to put a little more olive oil, and I'm going to make sure this doesn't dry out. I'm going to put a little olive oil on the top of my cauliflower. That's going to go a little more salt here. I feel like we're going to do a lot of great stuff in the new year. You know, we've got all, so many good things to happen. But right now, we're going to focus on heart happy. And then we'll have some dietitians at the first of the year doing some really great stuff, talking about how to get back on track. But right now, I don't want to say we're going to go off track. We're just going to go really heart happy into the space where we'll worry about it. Future year, we'll worry about how we're going to get back on track. But we will get you back on track. It's all about enjoying the holidays. All right, my, uh, my herbs here. I'm going to keep moving those guys around. If you could smell this, it's incredible. So those herbs have fried up. They're getting really crispy. You know what that reminds me of? The Barbudo potatoes. Yeah. Jonathan Waxman's potatoes. So they, so the way you make those, you bake the potatoes so they're nice and soft, like you just would bake baked potato, and then you rip them apart, and you kind of crush them, and then you throw them in a fryer with fried herbs, and you just fry them up, and then you salt the ever-loving heck out of them, and that's They're how you make ethereal those delicious. potatoes. The ethereal potatoes. The that's ethereal only for the biscuits. Potatoes. Ethereal. All right. Uh, my friend Katie got me so many cool plates. We have the home for the holiday plate. Where should I put on this one? Um, it's like the it's an HB and exclusive. Butter. Oh, the biscuits go in this. Have you seen this guy? This is the see the little. Uh, what's this? What's this design called? Not that's khaki. Plaid. Not, uh, it's plaid. That's called plaid. No, but isn't there a name for it, though? Plaid? Yeah, plaid. Plaid jammies? Plaid. It's plaid. That's what I was thinking of. Maybe it was the plaid jammies. They don't have plaid I thought it had a fancier name. Reminds me of my plaid jammies. I put biscuits in there because, you know, that is what it is. Uh, I'll plate potatoes. Look at this. Oh, look. Plaid. My, just plaid. like my old plaid jammies. My old plaid plate. I like this. We'll do the, what are we doing on this? We'll do uh, the uh, potatoes on this guy, and we'll do the cauliflower on this guy. That's what we're going to do. We'll save these other guys. These are all available at your local HEB, guys. I'm telling you. All right. Cauliflower is crispy. Boom. Here we go. Look at right that. This. There's something about cruciferous vegetables. I said red. And that yep, plaid. charred like. I'm telling you. Now, you would normally put these on the broiler. I'm going to turn that guy off because I broiled those bad boys. Turn. You would turn that off and you'd get that. Like, see, look at this. Come on. So here we go. Side. Ready to go. Olive oil. Right over the top. Yep. Just to kind of hold it. 
A yep. little more. I know you may be thinking, like, oh, my gosh, enough already. No, a little bit more. A little bit salt more. Salt and pepper, yes. A little salt and pepper. I drink olive oil. Stick I love it. To it. I'm telling you, I do So too. we could do mint on this guy if we wanted Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Mint. Dill. I got a little bit of chive. I got chopped up. We're just going to yeah. do a little bit of this. Just kind of all in the nooks and crannies. And that, that cheese just kind of melts in there a little bit. Yes, please. It just kind please. of coats and sticks to everything. So salty. Mm. Ooh, right? It's the holidays. A little bit of the chives. Okay, one. Cauliflower, pick it up. Here we go. That's done. All right, here we go. Potatoes. Hey, Let's see this. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. All right, so we're going to check again. Are you ready for this? This can go I on. I want to see potatoes some ready. deep caramelization here. I'm nervous, but I'm, I'm ready to reveal because I can already see there's going to be some good. So you see that? Ooh, la, la. That's what we want. So they, they should be, when you move them around, there should be like, they should feel a little bit like of a, like you want that Would kind we of call that a cook. California tan? Uh, a little bit more in a California tan. That's a <laughs> Southern California tan on that bad boy. Uh, these are ready to go. They're nice and crispy. You can see here. I'm not going to cook them on the second side. We've already cooked them again. Okay. I'm going to flip these guys over. So remember, we had duck fat, right? This is cooked in duck fat. We have our duck fat coated over these potatoes here. This is usually like probably be better to serve these in a bowl. Yep. I would slather these guys with Pecorino Romano cheese. Well, go ahead, please. No one's stopping you. And a little you. bit of the, uh, we've got to try. I would throw you one of these, but it's really, really, really I'm not hot. afraid. No, you're not. You're not. Hit me. All right, ready? Here we go. Not with the tongue. Okay. He flings oil across the Hang on, hang on. I got you. Okay. I got you. I'm going to save one for you. I'm going to let it. I got you. All right, a little bit of these potatoes. Look how crispy those bad boys are. They're like chips. I mean, that's literally what you're going to eat here. It's like this beautiful kind of duck fat potato chip. So duck fat it's really does have a high smoke point. So kind of um, you could cook right. at high temperatures and without burning great it. Great for high temp. Which is great. And it just has that little nuance of flavor. You gotta it have a good a salty kind potato. It has a, a velvety. Um, are you are you gonna throw me a potato? I am, but I want to get a little bit of this cheese, the chiz. I probably could just get better cheese, but I'm gonna make it difficult on myself. Do you like a little pine nut? Eat a little pine nut on it. Why not? I'm not scared. All right, a little bit of pecorino romano, a little bit of our fresh chives, a little duck fat potatoes. And you would just keep on going until it's done. Are you ready? OK, uh, I'm ready. He's going to throw it at me. Here we go. OK. And a one. And it will go on three. OK. And that's two, and there's three. Yes! Oh! oh! Just one more time. Come on. And then, and then you got it. Because okay. otherwise, yes. wasting potato. Oh my gosh. All right, those are done. It's this is so ready. Crunchy. The carrot turkey. Can I, can I show you this? So I sped it up. While you guys weren't looking, I cranked up the, uh, the oven because I wanted everything to kind of be done. I didn't want to show you the one I'd already made. I want to do it all together. Ooh. We have a tradition on this uh, show, on this program, I guess you could say, of uh, doing things a little carelessly just for kind of fun. And Rob and I uh, take full responsibility for those, uh, the toys we use without any kind of precaution. Uh, usually we use a blender, and we leave it open so you can see what's going on because it creates good TV and you can see it all. But we have this guy. This is so full of safety features, this Robo Cooper. It won't let me do anything. Uh, stressful or idiotic. So it's going to have to be with the lid on for it to work. I can't hold it down. So we'll just go safety first, folks. All right, we're going to pull out our uh, roasted kit. Look at this. Holy moly. I'm pretty sure you could mow a lawn or power a small boat with that thing. You could. You definitely could. The, uh, all right, this is our carrot. So you can see all this, all this beautiful caramelized, all the carrot. If you could smell this right now. So you can smell the caraway. It's burning my hand. All this goes in, so all that stuff. Don't leave any of the, uh, hang on, hang on, stand by. There we go, we're gonna regroup, here we go. All right, uh, all that beautiful stuff. Don't let anything, all the good burnt on bits, get it all in there. And normally, uh, and this is confession time, normally we have a much smaller uh, little food processor that works really, really well. However, um, I'm gonna get that parchment out of there, because that's not good. Uh, we would uh, normally use that one, but unfortunately, nor Char neither Charlotte or I knows where the base is. So fingers, oh, were, yeah. fingers were pointed. I'm not Pretty say sure it's in Tompkins' car. <laughs> uh, red pepper flakes, cumin, a couple of cloves of garlic yes. here. Again, this is napalm hot. Just came out of the oven. We're going to throw this together. A little bit of lemon juice. We're going to throw on this. A little bit of lemon zest. Already you can smell, I don't know if you can smell the uh, Charlotte, the... Uh, 
the cumin hitting that hot, the real good can, hot yes. of the, uh, the squash and everything is so good. All right, a little fresh lemon zest. Again, it's really going to pop. A little bit of fresh lemon juice. I got my handy dandy squeezer over here. A little bit of fresh lemon juice. And with small lemons, you can use the lime setting. <laughs> These little baby lemons here. We All right, so enough size. acid. So good, so good. All right, I did hit with a little bit of salt beforehand, but I want to make sure I hit it with a little more salt because there's nothing worse than trying to have to add salt after the, after the fact. That's it, I promise. All right, and we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. You kind of spin it around. Now, you don't need such a huge uh, food processor, obviously. Um, I certainly don't have one of these at my house. But these are, uh, this is fantastic just in the fact we're going to get it. You don't want it so pureed to where you don't get any texture in it. I think that's part of the, the beauty of this whole dish. But if you wanted to, you want to make this like a total dip for yourself, you could add a little bit of cold water as you're pureeing it when it's hot, and it'll kind of like help gel everything together. Ooh, it'll I make it really smooth if you want to make it like a hummus. I bet it's good at room temp. Could I put this on a biscuit? You could, but I have something else to show you on the biscuit. I promised you I was okay. going to show you this, and I'm going to show it to you. I'm oh, doing no. it. We're going to do it. So the carrot turshi. All the flavor. It smells so good. So good. Actually, I need this bowl. We're going to scoop this guy out of here. Blade goes off to the side. Handy dandy spatula. And my gigantic robotic robo tube can go over here now. All right, so in our bowl, everything out of the way. A little of that carrot turkey. Again, look at the color of this. Could be sweet potatoes. So if you were to see this on your table or on somebody's table, you'd be like, ah, maybe it's maybe it's a squash, maybe it's like a sweet potato, maybe it's some kind of well, this is a uh, Great little side dish. I'm going to kind of build up a little mound in the center. I'll wipe the plate off later. Points, no points for plating on this one. What I love to serve this with, and I'm going to show you, is a little bit of Greek yogurt. Ooh. My Greek yogurt because it has that acid that we like. So I'm going to hit it with a little bit of this. Hang in there. One more thing to show you. Hang in there. How are we doing on time? Am I done? Am I out? You got plenty of time, man. A little bit of this. I'm just using organic Greek yogurt. A little spoonful right on top there. Boom, you mix it around, so good. And then a little fresh chive. Again, fresh mint, Ooh. fresh everything on there. So I promised you that I'd show you this trick, this thing, and it's so good that I really wanted to share it with you, uh, especially for the holidays, because I want to set you up for success. We at HEB want to set you up with the most success. Mm, that is. So I'm going to show you how to make this. This is a vanilla bean butter. So it's probably the closest thing you can come to having um, basically a buttercream icing on your biscuit. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. It starts with uh, two sticks of softened butter in a pan here in our bowl. This is room temperature butter, really nice and soft. A pinch of salt. Why a pinch of salt? Because we want to bring out all those flavors of everything. A little pinch of salt. My vanilla bean paste. Now we have that Nielsen Massey vanilla bean paste. Ooh, it was a lot of vanilla bean paste. That was, that was a, an expensive pour. Was a, yeah, you got uh, a heavy hand there. We have the Cook's vanilla as well as the Nielsen Massey. You can find these in most HEBs. Uh, both are really good. The cook's a little bit cheaper. Um, just depends on which one you want to go with, but it's really, really good. And a little bit of our confectioner sugar, about a quarter to a third of a cup. So um, you like it. the vanilla bean paste does have sugar in it. It um, does. They do make a sugar-free version. Do we sell the sugar-free version? I don't think yes, I've seen it. Yes, we do. I bought it by mistake. What? Oh, you're like, <laughs> what is just, this? Just saying. All right, everything together. Butter, room temperature, in a, in a bowl here. We're just going to whisk it together. This is where friction is your friend. All right, so we're going to whip this. Again, the room temperature, easy to whip up. If you wanted to, now, next time I make this at my house, I'm going to use my stand mixer and put about three pounds of butter in it to make it because it's good on not only just these biscuits, it's good on pancakes, any kind of roll. If you do any kind of pie dough, croissant roll, anything, any kind of dessert or anything you would add butter to, this is what you could add your butter to right here. When you're going to make your French toast, add a little pat of this butter in with your uh, French toast. Sear it up with that vanilla butter on there, and that's it. This is super simple. This is the butter on top of butter. Is that enough butter? Should I have gotten a bigger bowl? Nope. Here we go. Check it out. Here we go. And here's our biscuits. You ready? How hot is this? Perfect. And in our fantastic 
these, uh, they really do remind me of my pajamas now that I'm looking at them. I'm like, this is my pajama biscuits is what I almost called them, but they're not. These are the fantastic creme fresh biscuits right here. You see they're just pulling apart. Is my big head in the way, Rob? I'm moving out of the way here. All right, and the center ones are my favorite. Look at that. See how beautifully they come apart? And we're just like, once we do it, let's open this bad boy up. A little butter on there. Yep, uh, butter both sides, please. Thank you. You want to catch this one? Do you want me to throw this one over there? So you, uh, uh, not with all that butter on it. That, <laughs> that, could, that might not end well. No, that's, that's you're not willing to take a risk on. Everything okay. else you're, you're fine with. That is it. This is the, uh, so good. That's the ball game right there, folks. Really, really easy. Don't forget, for these and other great recipes, you can always go to hub.com slash recipes for what's coming up next, which I happen to know, and I'll tell you. You can always go to hub.com slash classes. Coming up on Friday, we have uh, Master Chef Tiffany Derry. Um, lives up in Dallas. She's coming down to hang out. I'll be with her moderating. She's got a great southern menu she's going to cook up. It's really, really good, including some gumbo. And then next week, Charlotte, what are you going to do for the, uh, our fine friends out there? We are going to make gingerbread houses. Gingerbread houses and homemade gingerbread from scratch, yep. right? Uh, royal icing. I'm going to show you guys how to uh, put some gingerbread houses together. I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks to make um, to make, to make some, it kind of fun. To make it fun? Yeah. To make it easy? Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a very safe and happy holiday. If there's anything else you need, you can always go to your local HEB. Check out all the great things we have in store. Uh, I'm Scott. That's been Charlotte. And we appreciate you guys watching us. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Happy holidays.